Now, in order to do any of this, though, we first have to define a word up here, and that is reasonable. Specifically, we want to know what it means to reason. This is a question that, if you think about it, is actually kind of hard to answer. I mean, try to come up with your own definition right now. If I asked you to define what it means to say that something is reasonable or that you have reached a reasoned conclusion, what would you say? How would you define it? Quite a problem, isn't it? All right. This is the best definition I think we can come up with. Think, well, on the, in a short amount of time. We're not going to go into it in any great detail. If you think, understand, and form judgments by a process of logic, or undertake a logical analysis of facts. I think that's a fairly good definition of reason. Stop that. Get out of there, you. You'll have to forgive me as I tell my computer what it needs to do and what it doesn't. So this is reason. And I think that's most people will agree that that's a fair definition. And of course, reason is always counterposed to something called faith. In fact, many people will argue that these two things are in absolute contradiction to one another. You cannot have faith and reason, that they're in eternal combat. Well, again, we have to ask, what is faith? Again, the best definition I can come up with is, is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, all right, I agree with the definitions. But why on earth is Kelmeyer leaving a whole blank space over here? Doesn't he like using the entire board? Well, I do. But in order to use it here, I'm leaving room for something else. That is not it. That is it. When we engage in reason, we engage in judgment, right? We form judgments. And justice should be something that is, in a certain sense, blind. We all talk about blind faith, right? And I'll talk about whether or not that's a reasonable thing, a reasonable conversation to have, whether blind faith actually exists. But when we talk about forming judgments by process of logic, don't we also often talk about blind justice? Justice being a judgment formed by a process of logic, and it is also blind. So blind reason to a certain extent, although we never phrase it that way, but blind justice we certainly phrase that way, and we expect justice to be reasonable. There is a certain correspondence between these two concepts, and there is also a connection between them that we need to examine in a little greater depth here. All right, so first off we need to understand what logic is. What is logical analysis? Well, in logic, Logic starts with what is called an argument. An argument is not a fight about something. Rather, an argument is a discussion in which you have a premise or two, sometimes more, followed by a conclusion. And whether or not the argument is true or false, the argument may also be either valid or invalid. So an argument can be true or false. An argument can be valid or invalid. My oh my. Now we've got a whole lot more terms to define. What does it mean to be true or false? What does it mean to be valid or invalid? Well, let's start this by looking at the definition of truth. Truth is something that corresponds to reality. Okay, if it is true, it corresponds to what is real. If it is false, it corresponds, or it does not correspond to what is real. Valid, however, does not refer to reality in any necessary way. We can have something that is true, but invalid. We can have something that is, well, I'm sorry, we can have something that is true and valid, or we can have something that is valid, but most certainly not true. And it all has to do with this, this argument idea. 
this idea that there is a certain structure to the way that logic works. We have what's called the major premise, we have what's called the minor premise. Okay. Let us say that all men are mortal. I think that's a fairly safe statement for us to make. Most people are going to go along with it. Let us also say ah, Socrates is a man. The conclusion would be Socrates is mortal. See how this works? We have all men have a characteristic. This is an individual instance of the class. Therefore, the individual instance must have the characteristic the entire class has. This is called a valid logical argument. It also turns out to be a true logical argument. Let's try a different one. Let's say all bald men are stupid. Socrates is a bald man. Conclusion, Socrates is stupid. Again, we have the same thing going on. A class of people who have a characteristic. This individual is a member of the class. Therefore, this individual must have the characteristic. This is also a valid logical argument. But whereas the first one was true, Socrates is mortal, the conclusion to the second one, even though it is valid, is untrue. Socrates is not stupid. You see, validity refers to the logical structure of an argument. It doesn't tell us whether the major or the minor premise is true. Validity, if we say you have a valid argument, we're only saying that if we accept the premises, we must necessarily accept the conclusion. If I accept that this is true and I accept that is true, there's no way to avoid saying that this is true. If that is the case, then I can say that this is a valid argument. It doesn't mean that the argument is true. It just tells me that if I accept these two premises as true, then I must accept the conclusion as true. Okay? So validity is about the structure of the argument. Truth is whether or not the argument corresponds to reality. And the way that we demonstrate that Socrates is not, in fact, stupid is to either demonstrate that Socrates is not a bald man or to demonstrate that it is not the case that every bald man, all bald men, are stupid. And I would say that this major premise can be deleted because it is untrue. And since that premise is untrue, the conclusion no longer applies. We can no longer generate this conclusion. So we can demonstrate the whole thing is false, even though it was valid. Okay. So when we're doing logic, we have to be able to distinguish between validity and invalidity. We have to be able to distinguish between truth and falsehood. These are different concepts. Truth is not the same as validity. I can have a valid argument that turns out not to be true. Okay, because truth corresponds to reality, while validity just refers to how the argument is structured.